mas nindo ang Brazilian o ang Botox mas kuning Botox isa pa maglalaw ko lang tayo Ya, saya tahu. Ini, ini, sesilo. Kata mahu, dia bilang tak tahu. Yang kena tu begitu ada, saya tahu. Mana? Kau mula lagi. Beri nyuk, saya tak suka. 
Imbahada ba? Imbahada. Base. Okay. 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 Hoy, katunggo na ka? Katunggo na ka? Katunggo na ba ka? Ang kauban guys, katunggo na sa doon na siya guys. Dito ka na ka diha doon? Parala pa. Sino? Tukang sa kanilang mapapakal. Ilang na araw mong natawag niya. 
Philippines command is already on alert against this so-called active threat. But, but asked whether or not the vice president would be arrested over her uh, statement, definitely to be unclear so far. And if I now have yet to uh, give us further details as to how the PSC or how the palace in general uh, would move forward after this development. Right. Thank you so much, Katrina Domingo, reporting live. Security risks pushed back the transfer to a detention facility of Vice President Duterte's chief of staff. Cassandra Salonga joins us on the line for more. Hi, Cassandra, good afternoon. to the St. Luke's Medical Center where the Chief of Staff of Vice President of that was brought this morning. Let's get the latest there from our correspondent, Jesse Cruza. Jesse, how's it going there? Yes, we get that uh, time security remains at base here at St. Luke's Medical Center in Kansas City following the transfer of the office of the Vice President Chief of Staff. Attorney Zulaika Lopez was admitted early this morning after all ill. Lopez was brought to the hospital at 5 in the morning this Saturday after the House Committee of the Government and Public Accountability ordered her transfer to the Women's Correctional Institution in London, New York City. Initially detained at the House after being cited in contempt, Lopez was first taken to the Veterans Memorial Medical Center before being transferred to St. Luke's. Vice President tells us that their company in Lopez they all the process and has stayed by her side since last time. In an after interview, Vice President Duterte strongly criticized House Speaker Martin the Walters for allegedly ordering a lockdown of the House relatives, which claimed to lead the ambulance entry and medical response. Duterte expressed uncertainty about Lopez's condition, but placed her trust in the doctor's health care plan, stated that any medical decisions would follow the recommendations of the doctors and Lopez's mother. She noted that the chief of staff was largely as responsible as what she can do, so she managed to answer some of the doctor's questions. My president also voiced concern about Robert's mental state, describing how she has been dealing with a bag, and has said, I don't want to say, don't make this up, but to get the vomit. The doctor said Lopez was distressed by the lack of clear rules to bring her detention. Furthermore, the doctor said that the accused speaker of Lopez of using political tactics to advance his ambitions to the young president. We are in this mess. All the boss. What's the name of the king of Lopez of the president? He needs to control the president of the king. Na hindi, pag na hindi na 
lang decision making skills based in time as a nation as a state. We made a mistake with a Marcos and we are wasting time. She also questioned why Lopez, who had been fully cooperating with the investigation and adhering to the station schedules, was being antagonized despite her compliance. I was attempted homicide because she feared for her life. But when I was in the uniform of the policeman, I was in the uniform imagine mo ba naman at nung at at nine bigyan mo pa sa sa kwarto mo wala naman tayong problema eh ano bang problema natin nang doon mo nakadetain yung tao mag-a-attend ng hearing nagbibisit pa kami Meanwhile, we have had a Toronto Mato de la Rosa visited St. Luke's Medical Center past at 10 this morning and um, stated that his visit was to show support for the OBP, adding that the house's order to transfer attorney Lopez to the Women's Correctional Institution was unjustified. And that's the latest from my hand back to you, Rita. Hi, Jesse, just a question. Aside from Senator de la Rosa, were there any uh, officials, particularly from the House Quad Committee, who visited Zuleika just to check on her uh, situation. At this moment, uh, we, uh, we haven't seen any um, a member of the squad committee, but uh, earlier, uh, like just a few minutes uh, before we went live, um, Representative Rodante Marcoletta Mar 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 also arrived here at the St. Luke's Medical Center and um, uh, had established that uh, that the House should not only investigate the um, the confidential fund of the office of the president, but all of the national government agencies' confidential fund. And he also said that uh, uh, this is no longer an investigation in aid of legislation, but quote um, unquote in aid of persecution. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Jesse Kusak, reporting live. We are now joined by Congressman Joel Chua, the chairman of the House Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability. Congressman, thank you for joining this program. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure, Congressman. It's been a big night last night and everything that's been happening with the Vice President uh, meddling with, with uh, everything on the House of Representatives. Let's start first with the Vice President claiming that she is the legal counsel of Zerika Lopez when the investigation uh, also revolves around the death of herself. Constitution prohibits city officials of higher offices from practicing their professions. I'd like to ask you, Congressman. Is this any indication that an impeachment complaint against the vice president is being on by your committee? Well, uh, uh, frankly speaking, we have yet to talk about this, but uh, I'm just say, uh, saying that uh, the issues of the vice president to stand as legal counsel uh, does uh, prohibit under the Constitution. 
this is a, uh, this uh, Vice President Duterte's uh, um, attributions is not the only one we're looking at also. I'm also concerned about her brother, Congressman Polo Duterte's letter, where he informed the House that he will allow uh, Vice President Sara to stay indefinitely in his office while Lopez is detained. Is this move allowed for any Congressman? It's not uh, for the committee to decide. That's why when uh, Congressman Pulong uh, submitted his letter to this under presentation, I refer the said uh, letter to the uh, sergeant of arms. The claim of Vice President Duterte saying that what happened with Attorney Zuleika Lopez is an attempted homicide. What are your thoughts on this, Congressman? Uh, I do not know. Uh, she arrived in that conclusion. I don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vice President has also been by heads with House procedures for many instances now. Uh, among the bases cited in, in the order to transfer uh, Attorney Lopez from House Detention Facility to the Women's Correctional Facility in Mandaluyo are the Pizarro's breach of House security protocols. Uh, it's utter disregard and brazen non-compliance of orders defiance to security personnel, will the committee take action against the vice president? We will have uh, to decide on that uh, once the uh, uh, committee convicts or not. What is the final action to be taken on the safety of attorney Zuleika Lopez? What is what? Yeah, the final action of, uh, of to be taken on the safety of attorney Zuleika Lopez. Right now, she's in St. Luke's. After that, where where will she be taken, uh, Congressman? Uh, once uh, released uh, at the hospital, she will be escorted to the um, women's correctional because uh, there is already a uh, travel order mm -hmm. to transfer her from the House of Representatives to the Women's Correctional. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, uh, the Vice President physically uh, trying to stop this uh, order from happening, this really wouldn't be able, this wouldn't have any weight uh, on the decision of the House. Um, we have yet to get the report from the uh, subject at arms. Uh, so, once the report from the sergeant at arms uh, has arrived, uh, we will uh, discuss among our members. Okay. All right. Uh, the multiple contempt orders, I'd like to talk about this because this is so easily thrown by House Committee leaders, Congressman Joel. Will you be tempering this in hopes that other resource persons, particularly on the office of the, from the office of the Vice President, so they may finally decide to appear before the committees? Would you please repeat your question? Yeah, to sorry. Hear it clearly. Mm -hmm. Will you be tempering the multiple contempt orders easily thrown by House Committee leaders? Tempering? Yes, I mean, uh, you know, just to, uh, just to, not for, for House leaders to not throw that, or to not throw contempt orders so easy because uh, you may be hoping that other resource persons may finally decide to appear uh, in the investigations. Um, we will discuss on the matter uh, once the uh, committee convicts on Monday. Everything will be settled on Monday. Uh, for now, uh, we have yet to decide on all the issues. Um, because as chairman of the committee, I cannot decide alone. I have to confer with the other members. Mm -hmm. Finally, Congressman, is the Vice President's remark that she has contracted an assassin to kill the President a possible ground for impeachment? Definitely. All right, one more, uh, if you may. What will the House's next move be, given the Vice President's latest tirades? What will the House's, uh, what will the House's next move be, given the Vice President's latest tirades? Um, what will be the House next move? Uh, that is yet uh, to be discussed. Mm, all right, thank you so much for your time. Congressman Shua, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this afternoon. Thank you and uh, good day. Thank you. And now, moving on, let's get the insights of political analyst Professor Edmund Tayo on the political ramification of the Duterte's actions and tirades against the president. Professor, thank you so much for joining the program once again. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Our pleasure. First, uh, Professor, how will this impact the already sour relations between Marcos and Sara Duterte? 
what we can only pick up of uh, how the public has been responding to uh, these uh, exchanges, not particularly uh, as far as the strategy of uh, the, the vice president is concerned. Uh, well, because at the end of the day, it, uh, it seems that uh, there is really no uh, intent on answering uh, questions. I mean, uh, attending, uh, attending the House uh, investigations is one thing, uh, but answering uh, the questions uh, raised uh, uh, by the House you know, is um, uh, another uh, story entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vice President has launched tirades against President Marcos and his allies yeah. um, and even threatened to have the President assassinated if an alleged plot against her succeeds. I'd like to get your reaction on this, please. Um, even I, that's why I was saying uh, at the end of the day we will just have to uh, see how the public responds to it uh, because uh, this has uh, become uh, very personal, I have to say, you know, uh, to the point of uh, even uh, uh, suggesting you know, uh, that, that there are extra legal uh, options that are being uh, considered on uh, either, either uh, uh, of the either of the two camps. No? Uh, there was this report that uh, apparently the speaker uh, well, likely you know, uh, would be uh, interested to get this vice president and the vice president now saying uh, uh, the same thing no? as far as the president is concerned. So uh, again, um, Uh, 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 uh,